Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. And now it's time for a hot topic. We're talking about Tinubu suspending social investment program over wanton corruption. And today with us is Joe Femi Danguro, the founder and president of Koshofe Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. All right, let's get right into it. Um, we're seeing the scandal alleged um, fraud from the humanitarian affairs, the NSIP as well. And we're seeing all of this as, 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 as though these are ministries or these are government agencies that are used to siphon funds um, meant for vulnerable Nigerians. Now, the president has obviously you know, decided to suspend the social investment program over corruption. But my first question is, what is your take? Let's have an overview. What is your take on what the president is doing by suspending um, these agencies? Well, that's a step in the right direction. You know, uh, I think we have all seen it. Even the oppositions uh, are saying, yes, uh, we applaud the president for taking that decision. Mm. You know, in the present sense, no one really understands uh, what these agencies have been doing positively. You know, you remember that there have been scandals upon scandal with the IDPs and all that. But lately, one will understand, I think uh, Mr. President understands that too. Some people go into the government to, to steal money. Mm. Some are in the government to steal money. And some will want to go into the government to steal money. You know, so when you have this bunch of people in government, there's nothing you can do. Uh, you, you can't stop them until they are caught red-handed in some places. And uh, they have taken it for granted that after all, what will happen? You know, because in the past, you have not been seeing uh, serious consequences, um, serious uh, punishment. So it's like, uh, do go there, you know, take what you want. And uh, if you are caught, fine. If you are not caught, mm. you are okay. So, but suspending it now, because there is no statistic for us even to measure what amount of money should be budgeted for this program. I've said in some in some other areas that we don't have relevant statistics. We don't have the preparation for it. And there shouldn't be this kind of program for now. In other countries where you have a uh, social welfare program, mm. you have statistics. You know where people are living. We don't have, you know, sensors, an accurate sensors in this country whereby you know. And when people leave their, their homes or where they rented, they don't tell you where they're going. So there's no registrations of citizens in their homes, where they stay, how they stay, where they walk. So it's only a few states. Maybe in Lagos, you have this last track going on. How many people have registered? So most people, you don't have their addresses. So how do you now justify the amount of money being budgeted for this program? So there, there are a lot of loopholes, and it shouldn't have been. And now I think we should be able to correct it. I mean, the president should be able to look into this and is that to scrap the program for now or to you know come up with ideas or to come up with suggestions or to come up with you know positive ways of helping the vulnerables you know we, we always have vulnerables in our midst but they should be helped and not to be subjected to this kind of humiliation i think this is humiliation to the vulnerables Okay, um, so you talked about people going into government to steal, and that can just be their goal. Well, I, I think it's that national cake syndrome um, where people feel, oh, it's a national cake, let me go there, get my share, and I move out. But with the president suspending this um, social investment program, do you think it's an indication of um, true anti-corruption agenda? Or is it just uh, maybe PR, just to photo up, press, just to say, oh, yes, we're doing something? Is it an, um, a true anti-corruption agenda? I, I want to believe that it's part of it. You know, uh, if you watch and if you have seen uh, the president uh, and then uh, in Lagos, the while he was there, no? uh, he, I, I said it at the beginning, this president can sack you if you are not performing. Mm. And... People should just not, uh, take it easy and say, look, after all, I'm, because I'm APC, because I'm whatever party, he can sack you. He has the power and he's doing what he's supposed to do. And that is why it's being applauded here and there. But it's not about the applause. It's about doing the right thing. 
you know, and more heads will still roll. But the heads rolling into where and what will happen is what the people want to understand, is what the masses want to know. Because you are still in this money meant for the masses. And then it is not just to be investigated, and after that, in another five or ten years, the case is still in court and nothing comes out of it. We have seen it in the past. People steal money and people embezzle money, call it whatever name. And after 10 years, people are still walking on the street. They're even contesting election, mm. you know, to go back there again. So people are just getting fed up. That is why the effect of this suspension may not be that uh, popular. Because they say, oh, we've had it before. We've seen it before. So that is that before, before. But now, if there is a kind of punishment that will be meted out to the people, there is a kind of justice and fair justice that, that will be you know, carried out, and then people will continue to say this is different. We need a difference now. A difference has to be made. So if this will make a difference, fine. And that will make President Bola Mentinumbu a, a, you know, a, a great president as well. Because corruption is all over the place. Yeah. Well, um, we're hoping that proper investigation is done into this. And um, if they are found guilty, then they should be able to you know, face the consequences. So it's not just saying, oh, um, we saw this and that's where it ends. We should not just sweep it under the carpet. We should ensure that anyone who's stealing um, from government funds or treasury, they should be able to face the consequences. They should be able to dance to the, to, to the music. But my next question is, let's talk about the EFCC. Um, we have agencies such as the EFCC, ICPC, who are supposed to be looking into all of these um, accounts and, and the funding by the ministers and everyone in government and even, you know, private entities as well. Now, um, how do they check corruption to ensure that people are not just, they don't have a leeway? Because it seems, you know, when you say there's a loophole, it's not just a, it's a very like big loophole. Like everywhere you go, there's corruption. People are able to um, siphon money without even thinking because they feel like, oh, it's been done before. I can do it again. I'm not the first. I'm not going to be the last. So how do these government agencies um, for like EFCC, ICPC, how do they start to mitigate corruption as a whole? It was a good idea setting up these agencies to fight corruption or to tame corruption, whichever way you look at it. But uh, in the past or in recent times, you discovered that virtually all the head of uh, the agency, EFCC, uh, they've been either subjected to arrest, uh, investigation, and a couple of things, and nobody knows uh, the outcome has not been uh, made public. You know, so uh, this is where the masses are feeling it that look. Uh, what is going to happen? You know, uh, uh, lately, you know, I don't, I don't want to say so much about it, but you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So now, it, it is, is it going to be different? You know, uh, you have the ICPC, you know, but do you have a court to tame these people to judge these cases? Because if you take uh, these people to, you know, the, the, the usual, the normal court, and there's an adjournment, there's, you know, it's a steady adjournment every time, and it takes about uh, five years, and uh, sometimes the facts and the figures are, are not accurate again, and, uh, you know, it becomes another issue. But if people can be tried within three months, within five months, and then you see the effect of that. So you have cases in court uh, that has been, uh, you know, Prosecutions have been trying to gather facts and all that for the past uh, how many years? But the point is that there are rules, then there are laid down rules. I'm not a lawyer, but, but the, the, the thing is this. Uh, the bankers, if you should have, you know, 50 million, 100 million overnight in your account, they should inform the agencies. Yeah. Uh, is this kind of thing going on? Are the bankers doing their job? That you just see someone with about 150 million? What is the salary of that person? What is the business of that person? How much turnover is that business making in a, in a year, in a month? So, so it's not just the EFCC. EFCC needs the facts. They need information as well. So the citizens as well, the bankers as well, they have to inform the agencies. I think that's what the rule is all about. The bankers have to declare assets. And these ministers, they have to declare their assets. Have they declared their assets? Do we know what they have before going into the government? And do we know what they have when coming out of the government as well? So this is why it's just, um, to them, it's just like a game of hide and seek kind of, because nobody knows the asset. I don't know 
you know, we have to make it open that these people have to be declaring their assets regularly as stipulated in law. So if all these things and all the informations have been given, you know, there was a time we have this whistleblower thing. Yes. I know. I don't know whether that is still effective right now. Mm. So these are processes. And unless we follow the processes, but let's see what this will bring. And let's see, uh, you remember this aviation thing that was the, an issue in the aviation, mm -hmm. and then look at what is going on in this Mambila issue, where the, uh, the former president said, look, no one signs any project uh, above 25 million in his yeah. administration. So you'll be wondering, why is the minister signing, you know, just like that, such a huge amount of money? I mean, if that is the process, uh, they have to check it. So I think critically think that critically uh looking at the whole thing uh there's a lot of questions to be answered all right um so i mean i'm glad you even brought about the mambila project thing because that's also um corruption in the making now you highlighted the fact that the banks should be able to alert these um, agencies so i i think um maybe we don't share enough information maybe we don't work with each other so much that you know the agencies are aware like this person has just you know asked for this amount of money and we're seeing this money in this account why is this money here and then they have to investigate um what that money is for but if the agencies um are if the banks are not doing this shouldn't the agencies be um at alerts and you know even just having access to all of these um accounts and then let's talk about the cap as well shouldn't there be a cap for each serving minister or any government official at all, that you cannot, you know, have this type of money or you cannot sign for this type of money. Maybe you have to go to the president or anyone above you. Shouldn't shouldn't that be like a standard process? Well, I think, like I said, the processes are there, but you know, uh, you can adhering to them now is a different thing. Yeah, you can, you see, uh, yes, exactly. You can buy the process, uh, just like, uh, you know, in the private sector as well. You know, you have three signatories, and if the three signatory is not there, the bank will not release the money, and all, that, all, all, all kind of things like that. You have to take the, your papers, wherever, to uh, the executive council, and they have to approve. And a lot of processes are there. You know, you have the accountant general, you have the permanent secretary in the ministry. You have so many processes. And that's why you say there are a lot of bureaucracy out there. You know, but the point is, it's not a one-man thing. To steal money or to embezzle money, call it any name in, in the government, it's not a one-man thing. Mm. You know, you have to form a, 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 you know, a cloud. So that's why I'm saying that it's not just one person. You know, to now find all those people involved, uh, it will take some time. And then this is where the investigation has to be very critical as well. So because in some cases, um, we just have to wait and see uh, how the investigation goes because we can't say anything now until when we know uh, who and who are really involved. But I just want to say that uh, anyone working with President Bola Metinubu should be prepared to be honest and uh, should be prepared to do his work well. It's not just going to be uh, just go there and uh, take your cake and uh, get out and have your tea. You know, no, it's not going to be like that. I, I, I see, I see the president uh, ready to make a change. You know, we, because otherwise, other people are looking at us. Investors that we want to come, they are seeing it. We can't hide it. Yeah, <clears throat> we can't hide all these things. So, and if we are portraying our country to be a country of this kind of uh, regular incident, then what, what, what are we going to say? You know. Right. And each time you have a minister being involved, somebody top government official being involved, it can't help us, you know. And now we're just taking uh, a loan, and we are taking more loans, and we are borrowing money to do this kind of a thing. It's not an, a, a good thing. So why even do we set up this particular agency or ministry? Why, you know, this money, you know, because we don't have statistics and we cannot start it so easily. So I would have expected that let's have this money. Let's give, you know, you see, you have a public health center. These health centers equip them very well so that the vulnerables, the, 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 the low-end people can have access to good health. Where they can go to the public health center and be treated well. There's a public health center somewhere very uh, close by here. And I was there sometime at about 11 o'clock, an emergency somehow. And uh, we, we took the person there. I was surprised. 
There was a doctor on duty at about, and they said it's 24 7. Mm. And I was happy to see that. But some few months later, the same doctor was telling me that she was harassed at, at a point at night, and uh, we don't have more doctors to run this 24 7 thing. So why don't we look into that? That we have more doctors to do this, we have more equipment, we have more drugs for people to go there. That would be good for the vulnerables as well. So there are a lot of ways we can handle this. Look at the pensioners. Some of the pensioners uh, are earning maybe 20,000 naira after 35 years or 30 years. Some are earning just maybe you know, 20,000, 15,000. It is not enough. The statistics of those ones are already there where we can assist them. But I know there are some people who are not on that list. So let's begin to look at the ways or the better ways to really assist our people. So, <clears throat> excuse me, unless we do that, uh, I think we might just continue to give avenue for people to take this money as they want, and which is not good for this economy. Yeah. Okay, so another question I have is, um, how well do we even audit? Because there's one thing to be able to um, siphon money out, but then during your audit, you can see, oh, this amount of money went out at such a time, it was meant for this, but we can't really ascertain where the money went um, into. So now, do we, do we even have like this auditing procedure for each and every one of um, our agencies and ministries and, you know, just government offices? And shouldn't we have like a, a, a station compliance officer um, in each of, you know, these offices that is there to ensure that, okay, we're auditing and this is what the money is used for? And because at the end of the day, um, they should be able to have a report to Nigerians to say this is how this this is what we've received so far this is how we spent the money this is what we used mm -hmm. it for so shouldn't we be able to start um, have that transparency I think that that's the word I'm looking for have that transparency because at the end of the day we're looking to build trust for the longest time most of our politicians have failed us and so there's that trust deficit um, when you say a we think you're saying why and we never just trust what you're saying so we you know, things like this, a station compliance officer auditing, do you think that would be able to build trust between um, the Nigerian people and these government officials and President Bola Tinubu, um as well? I, I bet you, you have uh, Auditor General, you have Accountant General, you have all these generals, general, whatever. And um, uh, it takes two to tango, mm. uh, even in the private sector as well. So. Uh, yes, auditors will do their job and they will audit what they find and the figures. You see, we have all this uh, kind of uh, check and balances, you yeah. know, if you want to put it up. You, you have it in place. But you see, people will still want to do it. That's why I'm saying that it's not just one man doing it or one woman doing it. So the root is when we know that, look, uh, if you still. 50 million, mm. this is, you are going to jail for X amount of you years, know, years mm -hmm. and we are taking over your properties and all that. That should be these, you know, consequences. But when you don't have the consequences, people tend to do what they want. And these are the things we have to put in place. The lawmakers have to make laws and not distributing rice, uh, bags of rice and, and, and bread and, and whatever. Let the lawmaker make laws. Let the people understand what the laws are all about. Mm -hmm. You know, and let us begin to have respect for ourselves. You know, and these are the things that we have to begin to do. It is not too late. Children and grandchildren are hearing about stealing and you are telling them to steal. And you are trying to give them these good vibes of do things, doing things right. So, but then, but what they hear, what they see is not encouraging. So we have to begin somewhere. If the past has gone. We can still use the present to correct what may happen in the future. So my own take is the president, I mean, President Bola Metinumbu, should use this present moment to make corrections, to make adjustments. And so that people will think of now and begin to think in future. You know, four years is enough time to set an agenda and to follow it. This Renew Hope agenda is a fantastic slogan. It's a fantastic thing. But then if we begin to, you know, fundamentally practice what we say, 
it should go a long way to really stick in the minds of the people. And that is why, like I said at the beginning, even the opposition guys are saying, this is a good thing. He has done, he has taken the right step in the right direction and without wasting much time on it. Mm. All right. Um, so since we're talking about corruption, we know how much it has eaten deep into our system. Now, um, if the president is, you know, having this fight against corruption, maybe even moving into the past administration and how the how they've been corrupt and they start to, um, you know, find them or jail them or do whatever is necessary. And, I mean, make sure that they face the consequences. Don't you think maybe that could make him have like so many enemies? And from the from incident, you see that when someone comes with um, a, a new agenda and say this is what we're going to do, most times even even though it's positive, you have some enemies and they start to frustrate your administration. Um, we've seen things like um, the insurgency. We've seen things like Boko Haram. We've seen you know different things that would just come up. But what do you think? Um, can, what do you think the president can do to ensure that, okay, we're fighting corruption, we're doing things right, regardless of what anyone is saying? It's a decision of the president. The president decides. You know, uh, President Bola Metinumbu is not uh, unaware of all these things. He's very alert on it. He's quite aware of it. And uh, he has his advisors, his genuine advisors that we, you know, support him on it and uh, help to fight this it is not a day thing uh this thing has been there for years there is corruption everywhere everywhere there is corruption there is corruption in the private sector as well it's not only in the government uh, sector yeah. so but which is this uh we have to see uh that we start from somewhere so it's not about making enemies the enemies will always be there because they want to do evil that mm. is everywhere but then you can't because of that not do the right thing you want to do the right thing because you want to do the right thing i mean and if the enemy wants to do the wrong thing then they'll face the consequences as well you know who are the enemies are they not nigerians are they not the people that are here who are the people stealing money it's not as if the foreigner has come to steal our money I mean, yeah. so we, if you know them and you know where they are, I mean, we can easily trace them. And even if they are outside the country, you can easily trace them. So it's a big task. Uh, his uh, predecessors, they've, they've tried whatever, and we have seen that maybe it doesn't work in some area. But I think I still want to give him uh, this opportunity and the chance to really work out. You know, it's, it's not an easy thing. Let's look at it that way. We can, we can speak about it, yes. Uh, but, but because it's the president, we're looking at Abuja right now. What about the states? Yeah. What about the local governments? You think there's no corruption in those places as well? They, 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 you have corruption there. So have we brought any other person there to punish? So it's the same thing we are saying. It's not only in Abuja. It's not only at the federal level. You have it at the state level. You have it at the uh, you know, uh, local government level. You have it in places, in houses, in homes, you know. You have embezzlement everywhere. So, but then we are looking at it because this is just the central point. And then we have to fight it from the central point. Maybe to trickle down. Maybe people will learn from it and begin to do the right thing at, the, at this other sub-regional level or sub-national level. So it, it, it's, it's, it's quite a big task. We all know it. But then we just want the president to, you know, take the bull by the hand. All right, I think that's that's where we would wrap it up here. I think that's a very good way to land. Um, the president has to take the bull by the horn and make a decision. Um, fi the fight against corruption is the decision that needs to be taken um, by everybody. So whether you're the president, whether you're the chief of staff, whether you're a governor, a local government chairman, anywhere you find yourself, even in the private sector, even in your office, um, we should all have this collective goal that there is a fight against corruption and we will not be corrupt. Nigeria is not going to be known as the nation of corruption. Instead, we'll be known as people who thrive and who are honest. But yes, we want to thank you so much for joining us and coming here to just have this conversation and, you know, just have this fight against corruption. Thank you so much, Mr. Femi, for joining us. I appreciate you. You're most welcome. Thank you. All right, we've been speaking to Joe Femi Dangoro. He's the founder and president of Koshofe Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And we're talking about the president suspending the...
NSIP and all of these other humanitarian affairs industries um, in the bid to end corruption because we've seen the alleged um, fraud cases. But yes, we'll go on a quick break right now and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us.